use this chance to introduce myself as well. Yeah. My name is Karen Tamrazian. I'm originally coming from Russia, being here in Germany for about, I don't remember anymore, like 15 years or, or more. And um, I, I, I have my own company for the last 10 years. It's called Freeware Lovers. It's also a project. It's a crowd-based project where people contribute software to a platform uh, so they upload software, download software, they edit the description, upload screenshots, pictures, reviews. It's very much like Wikipedia, but for free software. Open source and free software, freeware. So, and uh, I was always very passionate about uh, communities and crowd-based projects. Because I was always kind of triggered by this thing that you can create a system and let the people operate it. It was always so is just the idea alone was so amazing to me and that's why I chose for today to present this topic which is called join the crowd revolution I think right now we have something what's called web 2.0 but I think there is something much much more what is coming what is coming in the future and this is really very exciting The content of the talk will be uh, consisting of four points. W the first point, I have here a small cheat sheet, which I just completely completed to write <laughs> just one hour ago. And uh, we'll be targeting four points. One is the society. Another one is the internet, different generations of the internet. And then the third topic will be designing a crowd-based business. And the last topic will be achieving individual freedom. The first topic will be on the society. And we will switch from the generation 1.0 to the 2.0 to the 3.0. It's very similar to the concept of the web 1.0, 2.0 and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about the society 1.0, old kind of society, where we had naturally occurring groups. The groups were forming naturally, very much like in the nature. You know, the wolves, they have their packs. The lions, they have also their kind of groups, which is called prides. And gorillas, they also uh, grouped in, in troops, for example. People way, way before were also grouping themselves into tribes. It was kind of natural driver behind this whole social movement. They were joining into a tribe and the head of the tribe or several heads of the tribe was the strongest one. Or maybe the smartest one. Or maybe the wisest one. But, but there were some criteria why these people were chosen to, to kind of head and uh, lead this, this group. This is uh, for me, and it's absolutely not scientific classification. I just made it up yesterday. <laughs> so for me, this is a society 1.0 in the crowd sense. And then came the society 2.0, when the government came into place. And we, with the government, we kind of deprived, deprived ourselves of some rights and some uh, just capabilities and gave it to them to manage th this for us. And uh, politi politics also pretty much came into the same time. And now who will be chosen to rule the people? It's not necessarily the strongest one or the wisest one or the cleverest one or whatever, smartest one. <laughs> there are some other criteria were going on in this different society. And it is still ongoing right now. So somebody, some politician is being choosed. And because w what's the motivators for him? Because he is so much altruistic and want to serve people? In most of the cases, no. There is self-targeted or his own interest at the first place to nominate himself. And then you have here this choice of people which you have to choose from. It's very different than it was in the society 1.0, where people themselves, they were able to 
point a finger to a person and say, I would trust this guy, because I believe him, he is kind of caring about other people. And for this guy, I'm not sure it was a good thing that everybody chose him, because now he has all this responsibility and work, and most of the times getting nothing for this in return. But because he was chosen, he will do this job, because he is feeling responsible, because everybody trusts him. Why? This is sometimes in some remote locations in villages, you can see this kind of societies, where the head of the village is being chosen by the villagers. Because, you know, some two houses having dispute, or two families, and they would come to one this wise man to resolve this dispute. And he will do his best to kind of find a solution which would work for both families, on so, or just figure out who is right here in this situation. There were no courts, no government, nothing like this. And it works in this kind of tribal, very basic societies. So we covered the society 1.0, 2.0, this current society, what's going on right now. I think we are now moving to the new age of the society, 3.0, where just every single one has access to almost all information, can make any choice, can decide pretty much on his about his own destiny, and why should we have right now this old, like centuries old system where you have to delegate someone to decide stuff for you. I mean, myself, I'm being, I, I put it myself in different structures into elections, and I was elected. And I see who is there, you know, who are else is being elected, and how they behave. Guys, there is no choice, there will be abuse of power every, almost every single time. These people feel elitarian about themselves, they are being choosed, doesn't matter, just maybe so nobody wanted to nominate themselves, just they just nominated, it was a no-brainer to be chosen there. Or maybe they just created a kind of campaign to push them forward and they were chosen. But now they are chosen, they are kind of, and elections go like for four years, for six years, sometimes for even longer period of time. So they are being kind of, they are feeling responsible a little bit for the other people, but th they think they can decide for everyone. And they kind of, they cope, or they g just take, take up and uh, stay away from these old people who, are, who, who have chosen them. So the question, basic question here, why are we doing, uh, why are we playing this game, you know? Now, when the elections can be done, I mean, you can see here in Germany, sometimes this kind of stuff, people go and vote for some sp stuff like to have uh, some fee for universities or not to have, like everybody is voting against it. I mean, we are living in a digital age. It's so much cheap, you know, you, you can write messages all the way, you know. It's, you, you have kind of this very basic elections going on without choosing some people to be elitarian and be like, carry our voice and talk, because you know, nobody knows what's going on there in this kind of military societies. So that's why I want to point out in the new society, we shouldn't necessarily carry the old crap with us and just digitalize this crap, you know. We can do things completely like from, from scratch. Okay, like the arguments I hear so many times, there are laws, you cannot do this and this and this. But come on, are the laws not there to serve the people and not just to put boundaries around them? To stop the innovation? It is in many cases like this. So this is not the priority. So, so many laws, laws, they don't make any sense because they are so old and they were completely designed for different situations, but the society is changing so frequently. And now we go and ask these politicians to release new laws, you know, we're going and asking them, we are the people, you know, we are who have to decide and who have the voice, they are the servants, but the situation looks completely different the other way around. We are looking like a servants and asking these guys. So what I want to point out here, this kind of thing. When we are moving to the new society, we are free to create new rules. We are free to create, to design the system in, in a completely new way. 
which corresponds to our society and the dyna dynamics within the society. So it was a topic about the society and now we will move to the another interesting topic. Okay, so we will move to the second big topic, which is Internet. And I, I gave this kind of classification, Internet 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. I especially made a difference than, than the Web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, uh, because my concept is a little bit different, but it could kind of overlap with this another web concept. So basically for me, web 1.0 is something like very classic web page created by hand, you know, like some classic e-commerce sites. You, you, sell, you have an online shop instead of just brick and mortar shop. You just sell something, just deliver it per post. That's it. Uh, or like billboards, forums, like very classical stuff, you know. What, let's talk a little bit about the web um, or internet 2.0. It's like interactive system already, center, but still centralized platform. So still there is one vendor, one operator which operates this, but it already involves the cloud. So like Wikipedia, for example, it's a great example for the Internet 2.0. Crowd-based, but Wikipedia Foundation is running it. So whatever happens to this organization, they were deciding at one point, like, should we put some advertisement on the Wikipedia or not? Or like maybe some foundation members will go crazy and close Wikipedia or whatever, do some kind of censorship or what. Still, just you see, one operator is running this whole thing. Like, Social media networks, it's a, another great example. Crowd-based, but every single social network is just based on one operator, which is running it and supporting whole infrastructure and everything. Like PayPal, it's a new way to pay uh, from one peer to another one, but completely operated by one company. Uh, all kind of messengers, you know, there are some kind of when we come to messengers, there are some kind of projects which are distributed. We are, I'm not talking about them. This classical messengers, messengers, they are still operated by one company like ICQ, Skype, whatever. You know, what, this is what I mean. Peer-to-peer -peer networks, still, it's already a good uh, move into decentralization of the whole system. But it's still, you know, if this server which is synchronizing the peers is not running, the whole network is down. And blogs and all this kind of stuff, you know, the companies like brought many, many times as an example, Uber or Airbnb. They are already massively involving clouds, a uh, crowd, sorry, and probably I will do this mistake many times in my speech. Uh, but crowd is already involved there, but still Airbnb is a commercial company which is responsible for the whole thing. It, there were many cases where they were unjustifiably banning, banning users from their platform. And the same thing with Uber. So it's still controlled by some uh, operator. And so on, like YouTube, Flickr, and so on. So this is the uh, Internet 2.0. And now let's talk about a little bit about the Internet 3.0. This is what is really coming already now and will be ever stronger in the future. And we will start with the blockchain. This is the kind of forerunner for the whole movement of Internet 3.0. And uh, another, another thing I'm very passionate about is the kind of ad hoc networks, where users can create networks somewhere in the remote locations without any centralized uh, station which will synchronize them. Or maybe ad hoc mobile communication. This is like a very exciting thing. Like, think for a moment, as soon as many people crow, uh, gather in one place, like, uh, for example, in, in a stadium or, or like, in a co on a concert, there the networks go down. The mobile cellular networks go down because so many people want to call and communicate and so on. There's just too many users. But it's so crazy. So many people there with mobile devices, with their endpoint devices. Why is they cannot communicate with each other, like, kind of, Internal stuff into the network and everything like synchronize itself, maybe load balance, whatever. Nothing like this because the net operators are not com absolutely not interested in doing this kind of stuff. They are losing the control, and this is what I'm talking about: the next generations of networks, of interconnectivity, 
where there is not so much control depending on one vendor or operator. But it is right now they cannot kind of figure out what's the business model. It's perfect for their users, for the customers, for the people, but it's it's a difficult thing to figure out what's the business model, how we will profit from it. Through all of this Internet 1, 2 and 3.0, open source is coming through. I mean, I'm very, I was a very long time supporter of open source and I think the best software right now you can get is the open source software. It's not just for, for, for no reason that the internet is complete, almost completely running on, on top of the open source, you know. And this whole innovation we have right now is thank, in, mo in many cases thanks, thankfully to the, to the open source movement. And uh, this is also a very big part. It will play even bigger role in the future network. Like, think about company like Microsoft. Like, maybe 15 years ago, something like this, or even 10 years ago, they were hating open source. They were, Bill Gates was comparing it to companies and something like this. Like, the guy was really hating, furious about it. What happens today? Microsoft is the number one contributor, developer-wise, to the open source project on GitHub. Imagine that. So some things you cannot really resist, you know. You have either to go with the trend or die standing in front of the trend and trying to stop it. It's difficult to stop the innovation. And in the stuff like this, the innovation is really uh, going through. The next uh, topic, which is designing a crowd-based business. And I will just touch upon some aspects which are required, in my opinion, to put into this mix to create a successful uh, crowd-based project. And the first subtopic would be choose your niche. And there are some criteria how you can choose a good niche for your for your business idea, if you want to create it a crowd, crowd kind of base or crowd driven. There are some sweet spots, low hanging fruits, which are, look what governments are doing. They are centralized kind of structures, they are not transparent, they are doing some stuff. In many, 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 like most of the cases, they are not efficient. If you can grab something from them, if you can kind of create business around it, it's an interesting niche where you can go into. Of course, you have to consider regulations and all this kind of stuff. But in um, sometimes, because they are so inefficient, they will cooperate with you as a business. Because you are just offloading them, maybe they will pr pay you some taxpayers' money to, to fix this job for them. And they will be happy, the job will be done, and you will be happy as well. This is the way kind of kind you, how you can sneak into this kind of business models. Big corporations, like for many, many years and decades, they were investing a lot of money, doing some stuff which require a lot of money and get, getting their turnaround, turn you know, just their returns and their profits. What they do, they're also very inefficient in most of the cases. We are not talking about new corporations which were created in the last 10 or 20 years. We are talking about corporations which are really old. And their structures are mostly hierarchical and they are very inefficient. They are, in a, they are a kind of con command and control systems and the innovation is really, you have to look for innovation there. It's, it's difficult to find it because of this kind of structure. Monopolies and oligopolies. This is also kind of things, but you say like, you could say like how you want to get into business of a monopoly. It's probably pretty much controlled and government kind of gave them all the power to run this kind of system. Yes, but the new technologies are coming up every single month and maybe there is something which can disrupt, what can disrupt their, their kind of operation. Look into new technologies. Look at if they run a kind of uh, cellular network where you need to uh, license to run it. Look into some other wireless technology which uh, run into 
kind of, uh, for example, unlicensed uh, band, you know, maybe you can do something there, something like this. Find a way, a way around it, because this is a sweet spot. They run it, they are inefficient, they just charge a lot of money people. I tell you, in 99% of the cases, customers are not happy with their crappy service. Because there are no motivators for them to improve constantly, to bring the, in the innovation. That's why, in my opinion, it's always a sweet spot and a kind of no-brainer. But you have to have kind of feeling how to get into this kind of business and to, into this niche. Another, this is uh, the fields which are waiting to be disrupted. And it's just a matter of time until they will be disrupted. If not you today, somebody else tomorrow will do this. Or maybe in two days, somebody completely else will do this. So the innovation is actually coming and you can, well, you, it's, it's difficult to resist it, you know, because the technologies are popping up and some, pe some clever guy will put two, s two components together and figure out a business model out of it. You can also do this, everyone. So everything, every business, old style, old school business, which had big, big margins, and a lot of unsatisfied customers, this is almost always connected, is to be disrupted. Not by me, not by you, maybe somebody else. Just a matter of time. So another thing I want to touch here is challenging the status quo. And we were talking about this topic on the society part of this discussion. If something is there for many years, it doesn't mean that it should be there for many other years which are coming. You can really question yourself. Is it efficient? Is it good? Is there something to be improved? If you can figure out a business model, an idea which is working, you can try things out in our digital age. Most of the cases, it doesn't require a lot of money. and. There are classical means like investors, you can have ki kind of have a bootstrap approach where you put some money aside and then create a project out of it. Use distributed world to create your own team, distributed team and put your forces together. If it's not enough, there are always like new kind of things which is crowdfunding and crowdsourcing which you can use also for this kind of... If your idea is so much appealing to the other people, you can use the platforms out there to put some money together to just push this idea. You shouldn't necessarily go and pay or, or like onboard some uh, investor which will tell you tomorrow what to do with your business, you know. You can go the crowd way. People will be just generally interested in your product which you will release and they will chip in some money and this, is, this will be your capital to create your business. But, come on, in many cases I created my company by completely bootstrapping. The thing you need nowadays to create a software platform, for example, just a laptop and a chair. That's pretty much it. Maybe just coffee from time to time. So basically, what, when we talk about the designing the business, it's, uh, and we, we are always talking about the scale. This is what everybody dreams about. Like every company I touch, it's just, yeah, we will conquer the world with our product dreams most of the times. So this here is the formula how to create a scalable system. Create it on scale with a low margin. Many companies think like, yeah, I will charge like 100 euros from this customer and from this customer. No, guy, you have to s charge maybe one buck or maybe 10 cents per month for your service. Or maybe in most of the cases, absolutely nothing and provide some premium service of on top of your basic service. And this is how you will earn money. Think like be clever, create clever business models. If you want to scale like massively, make it very easy to people for people to adopt it, to use it. So how do you protect against, uh, so you made an idea, 
You yeah. are doing it on low margin. Now I've come here and listened to you. Yeah. I check your site. And I, in, in, in two weeks, I have the same platform. You, your game, your operating model or your business model was that you would recover money in the next six months or one year or two years. Mm -hmm. I have a competing platform. Frank does it. Matthias does it. Now, by the end of the year, you have three competing platforms. So your revenue is now anyways going to get divided between the three of us because we are operating on the same service mm -hmm. and the same thing. So then how do you counter against that? Because this will always happen where ideas get copied or yeah. ideas get so... Absolutely. So the idea here, how to create a business which can be, which is difficult to disrupt by other company. Create it or design it in a such a way that it makes no sense whatsoever for a competition to enter this market. If you go low margin, it means, like, try to disrupt Amazon. Good luck. But the competition is me and you, so... And that, that yeah. Is, so I understand. For a bigger and smaller company, your uh, logic works. I was just thinking where, where we, we both are competing and I am also okay with low margin. I mean, be difficult because I'm also disrupting if you. I'm if I'm giving out this service for free, and it's very nicely usable by the users because I'm I'm very big proponent of usable systems because there are so many companies which are providing crappy products and they're wondering why nobody is using it because it's crappy. The answer. So if you design a product, if you release a product, it should be actually usable. Surprise. So if you provide it very low margin and I mean can you beat free <laughs> can you provide cheaper than free yes you can when you pay money to users to, to use your service this is like this is a very clever design and only such a portion of so many companies can really grasp this concept we are talking all the time about Amazon web services these guys are providing one year absolutely for free they have their free tier plan go beat them good luck <laughs> yeah so you it's like it's about being clever you know if you want everyone to use it like whatsapp look like like facebook provide it for free and have a premium on top of it for people who will actually pay for additional services for businesses Facebook is selling services to businesses, which are or, or like advertisement or stuff like this on top of the platform. This is what I'm talking about, b about massively scale scalable systems. <coughs> so freemium, I like this concept very much and I think it's applicable in many cases, like uh, many business solutions can use this kind of model, not every, but many. Uh, it's difficult when you run a hardware product like like let's talk about Adidas how you're going to provide some shoes for free and then provide on top of it some additional services but it's also possible you know let's talk again about Amazon another big company who are almost giving away their Kindle tablets for free so that the users can consume uh, content on top of it you know on using this platform this is what I'm talking about, creating a platform. Yesterday, Amazon offered 10 euros or 10 dollars to anyone who's willing to share uh, with the information of what websites they... So basically, uh, if you allow Amazon to track your web, uh, website behavior, they're giving you 10 dollars uh, to spend in your account. So they're giving money now to share your information. And people are taking it on some or not, but now they are directly competing and saying. Perfect example. And this is just everybody is thinking about money, but money is just one currency. Things like data is also like money, you know. I mean, not to use it in a fraudulent way, just legally allow. I mean, if I'm using some free service and uh, this service asks me in return to share my data with them in an anonymous way so nobody knows my name and like my address and everything I would agree every single day uh, of the week you know just yeah use it 
without my name on it, like completely legally, everything, you know, agreement, and provide this service to f for free for me. Why not? And the fourth topic is just completely, so probably surprising to you, but I want to talk about achieving individual freedom. And what I mean by this is like any crowd is consisting of single individuals. And we are talking right now, we were talking about creating a crowd-based business, but what about a single member of the crowd, how they will, what, what, is, what is the situation from their perspective? And I think the situation is really great. It's already good and it's get, getting even better. If you are a member of the crowd and we are here all are members of some crowds and you have the, this is the best time to live right now and I think that it will get even better. And uh, what I mean by this, like, there are some fundamental beliefs I believe in. Like, for example, right now, today, most of the people in the world are caught in this rat race. They go at 9 o'clock, or maybe slightly different time, at work. They do some stuff, they come back at 5 o'clock and they actually have a life after, after this whole period which they spend at work. So what I want to say, like most of the people doing some crap most of the day, because they are being paid for this. This is what they are supposed to do, because maybe they finished university or some other studies to do this stuff. Are they always really, do they always love what they do? The studies, different studies show that most of, in most of the cases, not. And they just, after work, they trying to figure out some hobbies to spend their, really, uh, their quality time in, you know, just to do something what they are very, very, very passionate about, to actually meet people where, which they want to meet and not forced to meet in the office every single day. And what I want to say, like, imagine a world where everybody would do what they're really passionate about. Just, just, it's just an idea, just for a moment. Like, right now the situation is, most of the people are doing some crap all the time. There is even a term for this, bullshit jobs. There is a book about it. I mean, this is our reality, most of the people going to job to earn money. So basically they are exchanging their time for the money and their lives because actually I just, I just counted how many hours I spend at work and with my wife and kids way more than with my family, actually people I love and want to care about. So the main point is uh, like I think that every single person, person is talented in something. Maybe, like some people say about themselves, and I saw it many times already, oh, I don't, I'm not really talented, I, I, I don't know what I can do really great, I d I'm not, like, I'm not creative, I'm not this and that. And the problem here, I think, just this person haven't discovered yet, it's, uh, there, uh, it's a thing, you know, just w where he's thriving. And, like, my suggestion here, and that's what I'm talking, this uh, 9 to 5 job, and afterwards you do on the weekends, you meet kind of club, go to a club where you like to meet people which whom you really enjoy to talk to and doing stuff, I don't know, maybe just some drone flying or I don't know, shooting club or whatever, whatever you do, you know. So basically what I'm talking about, there is, you are very passionate about this thing, yeah? Maybe even more than your job. The idea here, why not to turn your hobby, something what you're crazy about, into your full-time job? And there's this saying, you know, once you do something you love, 
it's not job anymore because you don't count it as job you just do it because you, you, you cannot have enough you took to same minded people you know who are also very passionate about this topic this is like I don't know it's like it's like crazy thing going on chemistry going on between these people and I believe personally that you are the best if you do what you can do good if you and in the things you are passionate about and before it was ever so difficult now it's also al not always possible but now in the future it will be more possible I mean you can discover your passion and turn into a full-time job and still you know what even contributes contribute the most to the society you will for sure become an expert in this field if you do stuff you are passionate about you cannot stop learning about it you cannot stop talking about it you can like we can sit here and you can speak probably about your passion whatever you are passionate about sports like hobbies whatever you can speak for hours about it and spend uncountable amount of time for it can you do this for job yeah maybe some hours and then your boss will come and say like yeah you should do this this way but but i'm not i'm not really agree i think well just you're being paid money shut up and do this thing it's just a matter of time of time until it come and you know what surprise even big co big corporations they fire people like monkeys if they if they don't need them it doesn't matter if you are the best one I saw it so many times they fire especially the best one because the best ones they know their value and they have a voice a little bit you know and if it's a hierarchical old style company they are not always tolerate different opinions from the bottom you know or some some individuals it's just until you meet some boss who is being elected by or placed there by somebody else who will not agree with you and then you will have to start problems now imagine you are with whole your clever head you're running your own business who is going to direct you or tell you what to do only your you are this is what I'm talking about everyone can contribute to the society and the best thing you can contribute is where you are the, the best person for this you know what you know the best what you're passionate about there's this talk of Steve Jobs he was doing at Stanford he said like do what you really love commit to this thing which you really love because the reason is very pragmatic there will be some walls on the way and you have to cross these walls to, to achieve your target and people who are not uh, pa passionate about their thing who are not crazy enough to pursue this target all the time no matter what happens like Elon Musk you know he, he put his own fortune on this to save Tesla and Tesla should be dead long time ago he put it his house everything all his stuff risked his complete fortune which he made from PayPal to run the company over one month and then another month and another month until they found an uh, investor who invested it should be normally it should be dead it should be a fail story a long time ago it is not because of the dedication of this person who is crazy about this shit and this is what uh, Steve was talking about be crazy about your stuff because there will be some walls on the way and you will have to cross them. Business is never easy, you know. Otherwise, everybody will be in the business, running their own businesses and, you know, all the cool stuff. No, it's a difficult thing. This is what I'm talking about. The things, I, I'm, I'm preaching this stuff. The things you are passionate about, you will continue to do. You will be the best at it. And you will achieve some success. And you know what? You will enjoy this whole way you will say yeah this is because I'm so great in this kind of thing 
and this is how this uniqueness of every single person comes because every single person has this unique mixture of qualities you know and it, it you know every fingerprint is different this is how I believe that every single person there is no crowd crowd only consists of many 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 individuals who are all different but all can contribute in their own way to the whole society that's why I'm talking about just ch just imagine for a moment most of the people would not do the crappy jobs the bullshit jobs but the stuff they're passionate about what kind of world it would be this is completely utopy you know but just imagine it's still we still can thrive to as, uh, achieve this you know for me personally this is uh, this is what I'm trying to achieve and this is what I'm trying to motivate other people to go for because uh, there is no competition going on here I have my set of creativity and qualities you you and you have your own set of creativity interests qualities whatsoever you will go your own path don't choose something what what is successful for other person you can find your own path which is completely unique uh, yeah and this another thing I believe in is this world and the universe in general is very abundant there are many opinions who are like people thinking like yeah everything is in business is already like belonging to somebody you know this every property like real estate out there is belonging to somebody everything is already decided for us we have just to live you know just the way we have to live what we what we get but i think i i, I strongly believe that the, there is a unlimited amount of opportunities in the world in the uni universe you know the universe is huge and our world is pretty big yeah maybe some business is already occupied by someone but you can always create something new some because you have this unique mixture in yourself of the qualities of your of different opinions of stuff you know this is how you can create your own stuff and everything what we see here created by humans was created by some, somebody envisioned it. You can just, creativity is mixing stuff, you know, taking, being influenced by this thing. It's very much like art, you know. I mean, there were some studies even, like music which is being created. And they analyzed the most successful musicians and they figured out their single tones of their tunes or their music were actually adapted from other musicians. This is how we people work. Our creativity is listening to my talk and thinking about your thing, which you were thinking probably many, many months before, and coming up, yeah, but I will take this idea and put my idea together with this, and this will create in this cool, great thing, you know. This is how we operate. And we were all the time talking about individuals in the crowd and we will continue with two more sub-topics and then we are done with this part. <laughs> Earn to be free. Following my concept where you, you have to do what you're passionate about and not what you should do or somebody tells you what you should do is about earning money or earning some value. And the first thing is, I, I strongly believe that in the future and already now, we can let our assets to work for us. And I will explain how. For example, all of you heard about this company called Airbnb, where actually the initial idea of this company was, um, Air, the, the name originally was described as air um, bre uh, bed and breakfast so basically n right now in most of the cases you just provide some um, apartment to somebody who is visiting this town and you let them live there for several days or weeks or whatever before initially it was like I have a vacant bed you can sleep there it was the idea and in 
places like San Francisco, it was a perfect thing, you know, just people were coming there to do some business or whatever, visiting, and they just need some bed to sleep on. And it still works. I think it's <laughs> this model still works, but mainly you have to uh, have an apartment or most of the people are providing their apartments or second apartment to um, run this kind of business. So now you can do this. If you have a spare bed or spare apartment somewhere, you can earn money with this, actually. Without being uh, named as a hotel or anything yeah, you know, like this. Another thing, like how many of you have their own houses? Like separate uh, standing house? Yeah, great. One. Do you have a, <laughs> do you have a, a photovoltaic uh, system on it? So you're a businessman, right? No. But you have to pay taxes from your no, income. Or oh, you run it separately? Or it's a simple approach. No taxes. Okay, okay. Not, not subsidized by government, not uh, putting in the power into the... Yes. Indeed. Are you putting power into it's the... Small enough to not to pay taxes and not to be a businessman. Ah, okay. But you're earning money with this, right? Yeah. Okay. That's cool, that's cool. When the sign is shining, you are, <laughs> you are good, right? You are very happy about it, like, because, because of the good weather and because it's bringing some money. That's great. Actually, this is one thing which you can do if you have a standalone house. You can put some photovoltaic system. So this is one, another one approach, you know. You can earn actually money with this, passively. It's there, it works, sun shines, everything is great. So car sharing, here in Germany it was very popular before, uh, it's in German it's called Mitfahrtzentrale. When you go to some place, some remote place, you can pick up with people with you. And they will just chip in some money. Now Uber turned it into a completely like whole blown business scheme. There are people who are doing full time Uber and they are not just a few people, there are many people out there who are doing this. I think here in Germany it's uh, kind of prohibited. You cannot run Uber here. <laughs> Old school country, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, this kind of things were already there because there was a monopoly on the bus uh, network. Buses were not allowed to run between cities here in Germany for many years just until recently they allowed them, thank you. So people were coming together to go from one place to another one, you know. And uh, car sharing, I think it's not mainstream right now, but uh, some people are doing it. And think about the future, the autonomous cars are coming. How it would be like, for most of the people, like 95% of time, your car is staying just there and doing nothing. How about letting your car do a service to different people and uh, in run in a kind of network and earn money for you? Could be really cool without you doing anything. When you need it, you will have it. But in the rest of the time, it can go and do the stuff. This is something which will come in the future, and uh, I, I, I'm not sure it will come exactly this way, but this kind of things we can think about. Like, you who he here have an internet access uh, uh, at home via wireless LAN? Raise your hand. VLAN at home. Oh. You have? Wireless, yeah. yeah, VLAN. Yeah, so all of you. Me too. So you are here, you are not using it. Uh, it's staying there. How about sharing your VLAN in a secure way? It's important. In a secure way with other people. Not, not just neighbor. But y not also not for free. You know, you know, I'm, I'm a member of this organization called, in Germany, called Freifunk, where you put a separate router or your even router to share your internet with some people. Mm -hmm. You can do this right now, but it's for free and I'm okay with this. But what if 
for sharing your internet with other people you would get some money not a lot but maybe just a couple of bucks per day or cents per day it would completely pay out your in, in a month it would completely pay out your internet uh, bill you know in telephone bill and you know what it will also enable people to run around completely without cellular dependency how cool would it be okay there is no system in place to do this but maybe somebody will come up with the idea how to put it in a secure way if you would be 100 percent assured it's a secure their platform is running it you're not responsible if somebody hacks something you're just providing the way to to access this thing you know something like this how about sharing your computing power if you have a computer staying there somewhere in your home office and it's running all the time maybe just or maybe you're turning it off but if you would r let, it, uh, let it run all the time and it would do some computations there are many projects like SETI at home for example they are searching for alien kind of signals and stuff like this not talking so much about this but this is kind of role model what if you would get money for this some small money I mean not 1000 euros per day for, <laughs> for letting your computer on but maybe just a few bucks which will completely cover your electricity bill for this for this operation wouldn't it be cool I think it would in the future all have all of you seen this iRobot movie with Will Smith you saw this cool robots running like around and helping people do stuff and then they went, went amok and crazy I'm not talking about the second part of the movie but the first part I was I was really impressed so in the future if you have this kind of robot personal robot doing stuff for you would it be okay for you if it will go shopping for your neighbor and uh, you will on your account you will receive some money for this to me it would be completely cool so basically the idea here you have assets and you let your assets work for you do some useful job maybe to other neighbors to other people and bring some money in and this is completely scalable it means if you have robot and you have you have autonomic uh, autonomous car doesn't mean that I don't have to have it I can also have it because you know what I live in another city or in another place I can do the same thing absolutely and this is the idea behind my villa network is located somewhere there only people who are crossing this place are re requiring it so you cannot very much monopolize it you can try so yeah another thing if you are passionate about things like music art cinematography or coaching or whatever this is the best time to try yourself and to realize your dreams because now you have access to the information and to the people if you have some dream some idea to be to run some stuff nowadays not a problem at all just open your podcast your YouTube channel your blog whatever you have the voice the problem is will p other people listen to your voice will they be interested and then it's up to you so there is no gatekeeper right now there are gatekeepers but you can avoid them in no time so the idea here is just the whole thing about the individual part of the cloud and every single person do what you love and the money will follow this is somebody saying I'm not just this is not coming from me and now we are li we live in the time of you of the prosumers this is everything I was talking about you know you are not only consuming you are not only receiving the stuff but you can also give away some stuff and exchange with other people you are not so much dependent on the authorities and all the people start a blog if you want to create your own stuff you create your own thing 
you can start with a blog. If you are into videos, YouTube channel. Write a book. I mean, before it was also possible, you can write a book. But then you have to go to publishers, and they were, they were selecting you. Yeah, no, you don't have enough background or whatever. Your language is not good and whatever. Just go and publish a Kindle book. <laughs> they take everyone. And it's up to your talents if you will achieve something or not. You cannot blame the whole world that it's not looking into your direction. It's only just you. Teach a class. If you are very passionate about something, if you are knowledgeable about this thing, share your knowledge with other people. Create a video course. It's also possible. There are many platforms out there. There are opportunities out there and you can use them. It's up to you. And there, another thing I want to mention, it's the last one. Uh, if there, another approach, I was talking about earn to be free and now save to be free. This subtopic is if you want to live independent life, you have to think how to earn money for this if you're not going to typical job. In to have sufficient enough uh, amount of money, you have to also look at your expenses. It means some people have to eat less, <laughs> literally. And uh, in our Western societies where we are living right now, people are overeating. This is just a fact. And just if you if you eat enough when you are hungry and stuff like this, it's already like your your body will actually thank you for this, because our bodies were not designed to run full time, you know, and digest the food with non-stop. Going from one place to another one and uh, at home people sometimes are losing control over their e eating habits. It's a serious problem. You can laugh about it, but it's a serious problem in Western societies. People are, have obesity and this is self caused in some places the quality of the products is not good they put a lot of stuff inside like chemicals but in most of the cases people are just putting too much inside you know they forgot this natural calling to go and reach out to food whenever they are hungry they are eating with their eyes you know something is beautiful there is some cake or something like very seducing is staying there, you just grab it and take because it looks good. Not that you are hungry. Lower your demands. A lot of people are running on, uh, they are very demanding, you know, they, because the neighbor got this BMW, I need to get a Porsche, Porsche now. You know, this is like putting their kind of bars very high and in many cases they just don't need it. You can Nowadays the cars are so good, most of the cars, you can go with a simpler car. Or many cases you can just go without car. Like our colleague here with a bicycle, exactly. It's great, it's great. Or sometimes just walk, take a walk. That's okay. People are designed to walk, you know. <laughs> and you know, there was these studies in 2010. So to be happy for most of the households in the States, $75,000 is enough. People who are earning above this, they are not substantially more happy than, this, than the people who are earning this kind of amount. And if you save to be free or if you, if you have this frugal lifestyle, you are also uh, having a smaller impact on our environment and it's making the whole thing more sustainable, our planet. And this is the last point.